Hello and welcome to a brand new crafting tips tutorial with myself Anthony Minnis. In this video I'm going to be showing you all about dry brushing and how to achieve the very best results with just a few simple techniques. If you like the content of this video please be sure to click the like button and if you haven't done so already please hit the subscribe button as well followed by the notifications button that will give you notifications of all brand new videos that I upload to my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's get into the world of dry brushing. So first off, let me explain to you what dry brushing actually is. It's a paint technique where you literally just tickling the surface of 3D objects that have got texture and just to give it that very very slight highlight. Also with the rose here you can see it starts off very very dark then it has that purple and then it has the gold. This has all been achieved by dry brushing. It's a really great technique and once you actually master it you'll be able to achieve things like this as well where you can actually blend colours near enough seamlessly from one to another. In your projects maybe you want to do something like this like on the wing here and also on the moon just to help bring out some of the amazing detail that is in your work. As I've mentioned dry brushing is all about bringing out the texture so let's dive in and we'll see how easy it actually is once you know the technique. So in this tutorial I've got three little projects that I'm going to show you each one there's just a slightly different step to making your projects really really stand out using the dry brushing technique. So the very first one we're going to do is this one here which is the little wing. Then we're going to move on to a coloured moulded piece and then finally we're going to really show some depth in this which is a clay piece that has been cast to represent some tree bark. So before we actually get to dry brushing itself, let's just talk about the brush. So the sort of brush that you're going to be wanting to use for dry brushing isn't this one. This one's really, really soft and it's got really quite long bristles. But that isn't the type of brush that you're going to be achieving really great results with. It's actually more one like this. Yes, it's a pretty beat up brush. But as you can see here, the bristles are actually quite firm. They're also quite short and if I hold it this way round, you can see it's slightly domed as well. So this originally was a normal brush that I have cut down and now I use exclusively for dry brushing. So now I've explained about the brushes, let's actually get to do some dry brushing with that little wing. So let's do a little wing to start with. I'm just going to be using some normal acrylic paint. So I'm just going to pop a little bit, and I do mean a little bit, onto a glass mat so you can see how little I'm going to be using. Right, the next thing is you've got to load your brush. Now the whole trick about dry brushing is you need hardly any paint on your brush. So literally I'm just coating the very, very tip of that brush. I don't want the paint to go right into the bristles so it's just on the top. Now if you're unsure that you've got too much or too little paint then simply just get a little bit of cardboard or a kitchen cloth and just wipe it. So you can see there there's hardly any on there and that's the sort of amount that you're going to want. Okay so I'm just going to load the brush bring our little wing back in. So first of all we're going to go in a downwards direction now when I do this I am lifting the brush off every single time so basically I'm going to paint on, lift off and then paint on again. So I'm just going in one direction. So here we go and as you can see I'm taking the brush off every single time. Okay so you do not want to brush down and then brush back up. It's just in one motion going down. So I'm just going to go over all of this and because the direction of the texture changes as it gets around here we're now not wanting to go in this direction we're wanting to follow the texture around okay so very very light strokes as well 
and then that's going to bring out all of the texture okay so again just load up the brush and as you can see I then wipe it back onto the mat so the trick is not to get too much paint so we're just going to go all the way around there okay and then we're going to go back to the beginning again and then just brush over the areas where we really want to accentuate that detail. So just keep on building up the paint. It's one of those techniques where if you have too much paint on your brush at once and you go over um, a little item like this, you're going to fill in all that detail straight away. So rather than do that, it's just a case if you want to build up the paint rather than try to do it in one go. So let's just go in there. Every so often, just step back from your piece, have a look where you want some more detail to show. So possibly just a little around here. So again, just load up the brush again. And you can see I'm sort of holding it quite flat to the texture that's actually on there. And again, just very, very light brush strokes will do the trick. And again, just wiping that paint off so there's not too much. And then just all the way down, like so. And then just here, again, just build that up. So there is our little wing done and you can see even though I put on hardly any paint at all there's still quite a lot left. So that's how to just do one colour with a texture that sort of like goes randomly throughout the design. So now we have the flower so the flower has got texture and obviously it's got lots of shape to that as well it's quite a dimensional piece as you can see. So to dry brush this is in exactly the same way as we did the little angel wing. So we've just got a little bit of paint there. This is a lighter colour than what's already on the flower. So it's going to pick it up, but we can do it in a couple of stages. So this will be the top coat, and then we're going to do white over the top of that as well. So we're going again from the centre and we are pulling the brush outwards from the centre like so. We are not then brushing back inwards. So it's just in one direction. Now when you first start you're probably not going to see much of an effect straight away so just keep on just literally tickling the very top of all of those shapes that make up this flower okay so just keep going in there so it's a case of just building up the first layer of the color so very little paint on the brush just as before and we're not applying that much pressure when we're actually putting the brush onto the surface. So just go all the way around. So you can see I'm just working in one direction. I'm actually twisting the flower around and just going in there and just adding that color. So I'm going to go around this a few times and then we'll come back and we'll apply some white paint. So that is the first colour. At the moment you can't really see it that well but it is there so this is a real gradual colour going from the very darkest to the lightest. So at the moment we've got some pink on there so I'm just going to add a little bit more and then we're actually going to add some white so this would be like a three stage uh, colouring to this. So there is a little bit of pink and we're also going to go for a little bit of white as well. So I'm just going to mix those in. Now when you mix the colours don't use the same brush that you're going to be using for a dry brushing. Get a separate brush to actually mix the colours together. As I mentioned earlier on, you don't want the paint to go too deep into the bristles that you're going to be using on your dry brushing brush. Okay, 
So I've mixed that one up and again I'm just going to load the brush and the brush is dry okay so there's nothing on there at the moment it is completely clean okay so again we're just going to load that up and then just start to very lightly just brush that on remember we're not going to be achieving the result in one pass of the brush so you will need to go around just a few times so that's exactly what I'm doing hardly any pressure again on the brush and just making sure that you're bringing out all the detail that you want to so again just leave us to do that and I'll just go around a couple of times and then I'll come back and then we'll have a look and see if we need another coat this time with white paint So now you can see we've added the, the pink and it's really, really just added dimension to the actual moulded piece itself, but just using the colour alone. So now the next step is we're just going to add a little bit of white there just to again accentuate it, that detail a little bit more. So we've used the dark colour, we've then used another colour on top, now we've gone for the light colour, so we're even going lighter now using some white. So it's the final stage now of our little flower. We're going to be using some white acrylic paint. I have completely cleaned the brush so there's no pink actually in there and the brush itself is completely dry. So we're ready to go for a little bit more dry brushing. So again, just load the brush just very lightly. You do not want the paint going right deep into the bristles. Okay, so it's literally just on the surface there. And then if you're unsure, just go onto a piece of kitchen cloth just to take some of that paint off. But once you get the technique, you will soon be able to guess how much paint is sort of like on your brush that it's going to work on your area that you want to dry brush. So you can see straight away we've just added that touch of white. White is a really good colour because a lot of the time it doesn't actually come out as white. It almost goes like a, a lighter version of the colour that is already on there. So just go around a couple of times depending how much you want that detail to pop and just again very little pressure when you're actually applying the paint okay and just keep on building up the colour. That's the you know the biggest tip I can actually pass on to you is a case of just building up the colour. Don't try to do it all in one go. So just keep on going around until you're happy with the result you get. So I'm just going to go around a few times and then I'll show you the end result. So there is our little flower all done, it's just the centrepiece now that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to get um, a yellow colour and I'm just going to add just the smallest amount of black just to then dry brush over the very centrepiece of our flower. So once again I'm just making sure that my brush is completely nice and dry. Okay, And then I've already mixed some colour up, some black and some yellow. So I'm just going to load some on my brush and then just sweep that round just to add a little bit of depth using the colour and obviously the raised parts of the mould and then we'll call it a day on our little flower head. So again just brush off, really is a light stroke onto our piece and just keep on building that up. So for something small like this it's probably best to just dry it in between and then just
just go back over by lightly brushing that on. Okay, keep the brush fairly flat again to the surface as much as you possibly can. So it's literally just picking up on the high points of the texture. So there is our flower complete. So that's another technique there to blend lots of different colours to achieve lots of dimension in your project by just using colour. So the last piece we're going to dry brush is this which is a piece of clay that has been cast in a mould that replicates some tree bark. So there's lots of texture. Now with this one because the majority of the texture is going from top to bottom Normally we would go in the opposite direction, which is this way, okay? But because this is really a deep texture, we're actually still going to be going in the direction of the bark, okay? So sometimes the rules do bend depending on the sort of cast that you're wanting to paint. So I'm going to mix up some colours and then we'll get painting. So this is actually a very dark brown. I've added some black to it. So now I'm going to use the same colour brown and I'm going to use slightly less black. So just load a very little amount onto your brush and then wipe it off. Like I mentioned, if you think you have got too much colour on your brush, just use a little piece of white paper or some kitchen cloth. And you can see if you're basically brushing that little on, then you know you've got enough to do the dry brushing. If you see a continual thick colour on there, then you know you've got way too much. So here we go, so we're just going to add this. Now this is going to take quite a time because there's a lot of building up of colour. So let's just start by just brushing some of that colour on. Now you will notice that I've got a lot of colour actually there already mixed up and that's because what I tend to do is then I lighten the colour as I go along. So you can see I'm just making sure that before I go back onto my piece, I'm taking off as much colour as possible. Again, if you're unsure, use that piece of paper and you can see that's how little paint is actually on there. So just keep on just taking it off and then just keep on going over the texture. So you can see at the moment, it's going to take quite a time to actually build this one up. So leave me to this and then I'll be back a little bit later when we will add a lighter colour of the brown. So that's the first coat of this particular colour, so I'm just going to go back over there Okay, and we're just going to build up that colour slowly. Again, if you're unsure as to how much paint, just use your piece of paper again, just to make sure you're not overloading the brush. It's a little bit more difficult when you're working on a darker colour, so always have a sheet of white paper or some white kitchen cloth close by, just in case you're unsure. Okay, so I'm just going to dry this piece to make sure it's really nice and dry before we put on a lighter colour of that brown. So this is how it's working at the moment. You can see that lighter brown is just starting to show through. So now I'm just going to add some white. I'm going to take some colour out of here. Okay, just reapply it just there. Okay, not too much. And then we're just going to add a little bit of white into that as well, just to lighten it up. So just a tad of white, that should do give that a little bit of a mix and we don't want to go too different from the colour that's already there so just want to build up the colours and then the dry brushing will help blend that so I'm just going to drag some more of the colour just into there we don't want, like I say too much of a drastic colour change straight away okay that's sort of like a yeah that's not too bad at all so there we go so let me just mix that up, okay. When you're going or using the same colours 
to um, get lighter you don't really need to actually um, clean your brush in between so virtually no paint on there anyway so now I'm just going to grab a little bit of that and then we're going to start brushing that over our bark mold so straight away you can see that's picking up on that really really nicely and now that lighter color is really picking up on that detail and bringing it all to life again I'm just literally tickling over the surface okay and the idea is not to completely obliterate the previous color we put down so again it's just a case of stepping back from what you've done and just seeing where you really want to accentuate the the texture so there we go I'm just going on to there okay so just build up that texture if you've got a deep part that like I have here in my mold then I'm just going to turn the brush a little bit and just again very very lightly as you can see I'm not applying any pressure to the brush so it's freely moving in my hand and that will help you not apply too much pressure so just build that up so lead me to this I will add this particular tone of the brown that we just mixed up and then we'll come back and we'll have a look so that is with a first coat of the lighter brown I'm just going to dry that before I then go back over with or possibly a second coat using that same color so now I've dried that color I can see that I need to just build it up a little bit more so I've still got that color there on my palette so again it's just a case of just going over yet again using that same technique as before I'm only painting in one direction which is from top to bottom I'm not then pulling the brush backwards like so so just go in there and the deep part again we're just going to keep on brushing that over just to help bring out some of that detail so literally just keep on going again with the same color so that's the second coat of lighter color of the brown we're going to go even lighter now to help keep on bringing out more of that detail so I'm going to add a little bit more white to this so I've added some more white now to the mix of the brown so you can see here you've got the very dark shade you've got the shade we had before which is just here and then we've got the lighter shade so it's just building it up all the time so again just go on to your cast piece and just start adding that color what I'm doing now I'm slightly going like at 45 degrees so it's picking up more on the edges from this side of the, the texture okay so that's what I'm tending to do there so it's about 45 degrees but I'm still holding the brush really loose and really flat to the surface if you hold the brush too upright like that you could well have a tendency of painting right in the crevices so you're not actually picking up on any of the detail so just keep on just going like that again I'm only brushing in the one direction so I'm not brushing this way and then going that way it is just the one direction to keep on accentuating that beautiful detail that we're bringing out in this mold you can see now because I've now changed the angle I'm actually painting at it is just picking up on those really high points of the mold going in that direction okay so now I'm just going to finish this off with a little bit of white paint so I'm just going to clear myself a little bit of space here so I can pop some white paint I'm still going to keep this because I'm probably going to go over with a couple of other of the brown colors 
again like before the most important thing is when you're dry brushing is if you're going from um, a dark color to white then always always just make sure that you actually clean your brush it's surprising although you're not overloading the brush when you actually clean it there's still going to be a lot of paint that actually comes out so just make sure the brush is clean before you go on to the next stage and also you want to make sure it's really dry as well so now we're going to go on with the white and with the white as I said with the, the flower when we did the flower it almost goes on like um, not transparent but it just lightens the color that it's going on top of so just keep on going over with that just in just in areas just to highlight some of the pieces as you can see we're doing just there so with the white you don't want to go over the the whole lot it's literally just about isolating bits of texture that you really want to accentuate so I'm just going to go and do that then we'll have a look because once the white has dried sometimes it almost just blends in a little bit too well and you may want to just go in there and just help bring out some more detail using some more white paint okay so there is our bark near enough done so just have a look at it and maybe you want to just go back over some color with some other colors um, in, in the browns or the whites they're just to like make it even more random than it is but that is how to achieve that sort of a look just by using different shades of a color and possibly white at the very end just to accentuate all of the beautiful detail in your molds so going in really closely here this is when you can see how well that dry brushing technique actually works you've got the dark dark shade that was originally on our piece of bark and then we just started to build up the colors getting lighter each time with that brown until finally we added some white paint so that is the sort of like the master class as such on how to do dry brushing in your crafting techniques it's going to work particularly well in all of your mixed media projects and i'll show you a few more examples right now of what you can be achieving using the dry brush technique end of the video now for dry brushing for crafters I hope you've learned lots of tips and techniques throughout the video that are going to help you achieve fantastic dry brushing in your crafting projects until next time thank you so much for watching and take care happy crafting